Viewers, the AI gods have blessed us yet again. This week has been probably the most insane week in AI technology I have seen in months and months. We've had two huge releases this week so far, the first one being GPT-4. I covered it in yesterday's video. I highly suggest you guys go check that one out because we went pretty in-depth. And today we're talking about Mid-Journey V5. Of course, Mid-Journey has been known as the best AI art image generator for quite some time time ever since the release of Midjourney v4 and yeah they just released v5 which is a huge step up from v4 in a lot of different ways and we're going to be talking about all the different ins and outs of it today we'll also be taking a look at what people have been doing with Midjourney v5 thus far and the best of the best in terms of generations I gotta say, there is quite a lot to talk about when it comes to new features and new announcements, but let's just jump right in and see what people are generating with V5. So this is Midjourney's website. This is their community feed, which features the hot and trending images. And of course, these are all going to be V5 since V5 just released. By the way, guys, V5 is technically in its alpha state, so it's not in its final production you could say taking a look at the first top image that we see trending here and it is very very realistic you'd be hard pressed to tell this isn't just you know a photo of some girl wearing some iron man style robotic suit armor the face looks very very good though there's no weirdness or creepiness going on with there you know as humans it's very easy for us to tell when something is off about a face and this one looks pretty darn good maybe a little bit of weirdness going on with the eyes but other than that, it looks very realistic. The hair also looks great, of course. And then there's lots of detail in the armor. The armor looks like it's made of actual plates and actual materials. It doesn't look like a mishmash of AI technology generation. I mean, there's a little bit of weirdness if you look close up, but all in all, this is a fantastic generation. Some themes you're going to notice today are lots of detail, much more realistic generations. You can already tell from this image aspect ratio and a few of those other dash dash commands are working right off the bat with v5 in mid journey so yeah you're gonna see a lot of those taller generations like we'll take this one for example this is just like some i don't know i guess it's like the ultimate sandwich what's the prompt for this one yeah lots of detail by the way all this food looks very delicious um the prompt was stacked with just a bunch of pies wow okay so it really is adding some creative flair in this one. But yeah, you can see you can do some crazy aspect ratios right off the bat with V4. When V4 first released, no aspect ratios were allowed at all. So it's nice to see that they're just including it even in the alpha version. Of course, though, lots of insane detail. You can see definitely in this image, the moss and the different overgrownness of this building looks very, very detailed and just scrumptious in general, I think. I mean, some of these realistic generations are absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's really honestly scary and shocking how much Mid Journey is able to make these photos of people look like there's like a soul behind the eyes. It's very almost it's frightening almost really. You can see she's looking intently at the camera and you can almost see what her intent is or what her soul is behind the eyes. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are picking up on that. But yeah, the materials are just out of this world, like on her jacket. I mean, it looks maybe a little too rubbery, but yeah, the fur looks furry. The food looks foody. The different lights and reflections and the overall detail of the whole image is just astonishing on a whole nother level. Yeah, the realistic generations are out of control with V5. But yeah, you can see just scrolling through the hot trending imagery in Midjourney's website, the generations are incredible. You can pretty much click on any one of these and be impressed. Lots of really cool lighting like this. That just looks like a photo to me, like pretty much. Maybe there's some weirdness to out. Oh, definitely some weirdness with the keyboard when you look at the upscale. But other than that, like just a first glance, looks like a real photo. Let's go ahead and get into what is actually new with V5 and a little bit of the details that Midjourney provided for us. So folks, the first thing to note here is, again, this is just an alpha test, so this isn't the final result for V5. This isn't the final release. We're just in the public alpha testing phase for V5. So some things might be a little bit more screwed up, like this guy definitely isn't perfect here, but this is just a random generation I clicked on. The real stark contrast between this one and Midjourney V4 is the fact that it's trying to follow the prompts a little bit more closely than the previous V4 model and it's trying to give you a wider range of possible generations and art styles and possibilities 
with this V5 model. So that's why we're seeing so many more realistic generations as opposed to artistic ones. And yeah, this is essentially meant to be like a pro mode with far better capabilities for tweaking prompts. So the better your prompt is, the better your generations are going to come out. And they actually said that shorter little prompts aren't going to do as well typically than longer detailed prompts that are really trying to attack a specific target. And most of the prompts are, most of the prompts that I'm running across here that are really, really good are longer prompts, I would say, although there are maybe a few sentences long at the most. Like this is still a really fantastic generation, you could say, but it's literally only a dragon wearing a rainbow tutu, highly detailed Lisa Frank style. So not too much going on. It looks like a simple generation, nothing like super mind blowing, although it is still very good. Or even this one, for example, which was literally no text prompt, apparently. I'm not sure how this is working, but yeah, this is not a very good image generation for mid journey v5 at all but then we take a look at one of these higher performing more detailed prompts and we can see this is quite a long prompt indeed and actually the fingers are a little screwed up in this prompt but yeah you will notice more detail all around and pretty much every prompt you generate and that's because there's actually two times the resolution of these images that mid journey v5 is generating in comparison to mid journey v4 and not only is there more detail necessarily, but the details are actually going to be more accurate. So here's an image that I generated. It looks very, very realistic, but you can see the details in the background actually look pretty accurate overall. I mean, his fingers are absolutely time warped and it's horrifying. And the thing in the middle is supposed to be like an interdimensional tesseract, but the rest of it in the background looks pretty accurate. And his face, of course, looks accurate as well. And here's another example of fine details being more accurate. This is an image I also generated. This is a guy just wearing like a lemon suit in the middle of Walmart. And you can see as we zoom in here, lots of accurate details. I'm I mean, it's a little mushy in the background here with the products, especially in these people's faces, but his face is very much accurate. And also this watch here looks pretty darn good as well with the hands in the pocket. So yeah, the fine details in Mid Journey V5 are definitely very stunning. So yes, where Mid Journey V4 was really meant to be more aesthetically appealing, Mid Journey V5 takes a different approach and this is their quote unquote more pro model that essentially is going to again give you that wider range and wider variety so your prompting is much much more powerful with this one this model definitely prompts a lot different than mid journey v4 however mid journey did say that on the final release of v5 when it is rolled out as the default mid journey model they're going to make sure it comes in this default mode that is much much more stylistic like we're used to with mid journey v4 where you can just type like a one word prompt and a beautiful image is resulted no matter what that's not really the case with the current pro mid journey v5 alpha model and essentially you're going to be able to toggle when mid journey v5 is fully released whether you want the stylized default result or the more pro prompt friendly option one thing I'm noticing with a lot of these very, very realistic and detailed results, it actually reminds me a lot of the Aperture Lexica realistic stable diffusion fine tuned model. So we'll take this same prompt that was generated in mid journey V5 and throw it into Lexica Aperture. And I think you guys will notice some similarities in the realism of these two models. Although I will say mid journey V5 is quite more capable than Lexica Aperture. So yeah, these aren't super, super realistic. I will say they look a little bit more artistic, but Lexica Aperture is more known for their realistic imagery. And then this is what we got out of V5. Obviously, man, look at the detail in V5. Insane results. So before we actually get into direct comparisons between V5 and V4 mid journeys, I'll just quickly tell you guys how to use it and the different options you have for it. Obviously here is where you generate a mid journey still inside of discord for some reason. So when we type a prompt with mid journey, we start with slash, then we click imagine and then we type our prompt. There is our prompt for example. And then if we want to make sure it's V5, we do a space and then we do dash dash V space five. And then that will give us V5 imagery. And remember V5 also works with the dash dash tile command, which essentially will create a tileable image for you. And again, it also works with aspect ratios right off the bat and dash dash stylize as well. So again, that will create a V5 imagery, but you can also just switch V5 on by default in your mid journey settings. So all you have to do is basically do the slash and then go to your settings there and then click your settings pulls up this one and you just have to click on mid journey V5 over there instead of mid journey V4, which has been the default for some time now. 
And as you guys can see, this is a lot of my own testing here in Midjourney, trying a lot of different things out. And yeah, you guys will notice that a lot of the imagery you're going to get out of Midjourney is very realistic by default now. And again, that's that pro model where you have to really tweak and stylize your prompt to get it exactly the way you want before their more default Midjourney style version comes out. As you can see, I was trying it with some logos here. It does the Coca-Cola logo pretty darn well. I also tried to get it to spell. It's not spelling perfectly yet at all. However, I will say, folks, the upscaling is blazing fast now with Midjourney V4. As you can see, I click that, and our upscale is already done. So yeah, the upscales are essentially instant now with Midjourney, where actually in Midjourney V4, upscaling was the longest thing ever. It took longer than even generating regular four imageries I would also like to mention that image to image still works with this as well as image weight. So you could upload an image in here and have mid journey create a generation based off of that image. So you pretty much have your full mid journey capability right off the bat with V5. And here is our tileable generation that mid journey V5 has created here. All right, folks, let's take a look at some direct mid journey V4 and V5 comparisons that I've rounded up from across the web. So this one was by Nick St. Pierre, Nick floats on Twitter. So on the left hand side is V4 and on the right hand side is V5. And you can see the comparison between these two images is actually pretty stark. I will say I do notice a little bit more dynamic range in the right hand side image and essentially what dynamic range is. You sort of think of it as how much detail you're able to capture out of the very light and very dark portions of the image. So you'll notice here in our little test that the lighter portions of the image actually reveal a little bit more detail and so do the dark ones and it gives it a little bit less contrast in some ways, makes it maybe a little bit more realistic in some ways. But again, if you wanted to really give this more contrast, you could also add more contrast into your prompt. But yeah, lots of detail in the image overall, and then the old Midjourney V4 one maybe looks a little bit more polished in some areas, I would say, but overall, this one's a lot more contrasty, a lot less dynamic range you could see in the lighter parts of the image and the darker parts of the image. You can see there's a huge difference in this prompt between V4 and V5. While V4's image still is pretty good, it's definitely lacking a little bit of detail, I think, in comparison to Midjourney V5's image. Both images are pretty soft in the end, and I think there's just a little bit more realism with the prompt on the right, which of course is Midjourney V5. Here's another pretty telling image. These are actually both very, very similar images. But I gotta say, there's something a little bit more natural and realistic about the image that appears on the right versus the one that appears on the left. And of course, V5 there on the right is offering, you know, that more realistic touch. Where V4 has her just sort of staring dead on into the camera, it still looks very realistic, but there's a lot more contrast and it doesn't look like it was taken with a camera. It still looks a little bit painterly. And again, we see the same result here with this image as well where the image on the right hand side has a little bit less contrast. It's not as it doesn't look like there's an Instagram filter over it. We could say where the original V4 image on the left hand side looks like it's very filtered out and already has been edited in some ways. Although I got to say, I love the, the color grading on both images that Midjourney has produced when it generated them. This image is pretty funny. This is just a basic V5 image. This is elves working in a New York City bodega. And this kind of reminds me of those original Dolly 2 tests where you would try to generate things that you would never see in real life. I got to say, Midjourney V5 is bringing back those ideas and we're, we'll take a look at more images like that later. But yeah, the elves look pretty realistic. I like the different products that are showed off in this one. And I really like the way that it looks like a real photo reminds me of what Dolly 2 wanted to be in some weird way. And this one's pretty telling as well. Both images still look really good. But again, there's just something a little bit more realistic about the image on the right hand side, although his keyboard looks very screwed up in both images. Actually, this one is very telling as well. Mid journey V4 completely screwed up this image. As you can see, the inside of the car looks really messed up. The logos on the front and stuff are completely destroyed where V5 just absolutely nails the image. Even the number plate is like pretty much perfect. But yeah, the Mercedes logo actually looks good for once and it's a little bit less screwed up in the fine details with this car and the sunset in the background looks absolutely 
fantastic. Another one of those ridiculous mid-journey V5 generations. This is literally just a photo of a woman selling pho at a Vietnamese street market. It is just ridiculous. It looks like someone took this photo. Really, really impressive imagery. Photo of a New York deli absolutely bustling with people. And yeah, at first glance, you'd think that's a real photo. And when you look closely at the meat and some of the people, things are a little bit more screwed up. But man, Midjourney V5 is fantastic at realism. Here is a pretty detailed prompt. These two are very, very similar. Midjourney V4 still did a really good job, although V5 just has that touch that makes it look like pretty much a real photo. I don't know about you guys, but there's something weird about this image uh, with the V4 in comparison to V5. V4 has a lot more of this like interesting, crazy output that uh, V5 is sort of lacking. At Smokeaway here on Twitter also showed off how Midjourney V5 is able to produce hands that actually have five fingers this time pretty reliably as well, which is a pretty big step up in the AI art space. All these hands look Pretty darn good. It's not easy to get uh, good looking five finger hands in the AI art space. John Finger here at Mr. John Finger on Twitter showed off some of his most fantastic results here with Mid Journey V5. All of these are quite breathtaking. Lots of detail in this, sparks flying everywhere, the armor looks fantastic as well, and the smoke looks pretty good as well, the lighting too. Lots of attention to little specific parts of the images on these, and these all look very cinematic as well. You can see there's still some screwed up portions of the image, but all in all, really, really fantastic results. This one's pretty breathtaking. And again, we're seeing a lot more attention to detail on vehicles with this one as well. As you can see, these two Ferrari F40s look Pretty darn accurate, I would say. Nick St. Pierre also comes back in here to show us that you can actually use the dash dash stylize in the Mid Journey prompt to make the images look a little bit more like that classic Mid Journey V4 extra stylized image. And you can see this one has no stylization. It looks pretty bland, but very realistic. This one looks a little bit more cinematic, maybe. It looks like a scene from a movie, you could say. And then this one, lots of more color in the whole image. And then finally, this one is packed full of detail, very stylized image. She's looking directly at the camera so if you want some more of that stylized look you can definitely do dash dash stylize 1000 or 500 to really add that to your prompt john finger also points out that mid journey seems to be better than v4 at listening to what your prompts are and here are some of the examples he showed again just really really mind-blowing imagery in general the amount of detail is pretty pretty fascinating i thought v4 had like a ton of detail but this really steps it up a notch in a lot of ways especially look at that image right there and you can see all the different droplets covering the uh, spacesuit some more side-by-side -side examples here with mid journey v4 versus v5 v5 is going to be on the right and we can see v5 is definitely able to add a little bit more detail there's more books you could see more of a full body image with this guy and then you can also see the dragon or demon or whatever that's trying to attack him a lot more clear where this one's a little bit more messed up so yeah that's i would say a good example of following the prompt better this one as well you could just see the extra detail that's being added where this one's trying to take sort of the same curves and combine them all together into one image this one's able to separate everything out a little bit better and yeah in general just provide much more detail and different colored pixels I guess you could say to the whole image at the end of the day folks you can definitely see the resolution difference with this final bottom image where v4 is a little bit I don't know blurry you could say this one has a lot more sharp and fine details reddit also made a few discoveries about mid journey v5 as well such as the fact that it's actually really really good at popular well-known characters such as mario in this example this is a macro photo of a plastic figurine of detective mario and it does a pretty good job i'm not exactly sure what detective mario was holding there it's like a little cup full of water but it looks a lot like mario i don't know if he looks like a detective necessarily but he definitely looks like a plastic figurine and he definitely looks like he's at a job at least or in some form of a uniform reddit also discovered that v5 is almost getting text through so here's an example where you can see it got most of the letters correct you can see like the is there the word here is there the word gray is also there it's trying to say something about fries you can tell but it's not quite there in the full image yet but the spelling is definitely better there's a bump in its ability to replicate numbers and letters and fine details for sure and this is further exemplified in their different wristwatches that are generated. You can see the little dots 
along the entire wristwatch and the circles and everything and the actual numbers are pretty, pretty darn good. And especially the text over here too, it's a lot more straight lines. The lines aren't as wavy and wiggly and wobbly. And of course the rest of the watch looks very, very good as well. But those straight lines, the really, really difficult stuff for these AI art image generators to resolve is looking better in V5. And yeah, you can take a look, see the actually the number 70 here, 75, oh, another 75, 85, 90. It's not really counting exactly well. You could tell they get longer over time, but yeah, definitely a lot better straight lines. You can definitely tell with these generations of watches, it's learning to count in some ways. It's learning to generate text and numbers and stuff like that. And this one is actually pretty cool as well. We got 12, one, two, no three for some reason, then four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one's almost perfect. A pretty astonishing generation to say the least. It actually almost got this one all the way right. I really like the variety of watches it's able to generate. Watches are a pretty good demonstration here to show what the model's really capable of in terms of resolving detail and getting things accurate. Again, some of those Dolly-esque comedy generations are coming back. So again, this is Geralt from the Witcher series working at Radio Shack. And I really love these types of generations. They always make me laugh, but he definitely looks like he's ready to fix your old early 2000s electronics device at Radio Shack. And it's really funny how they've kind of modernized him a little bit, but like it's definitely recognizable as that famous character from The Witcher. And I love that he's got coffee too on the side. He just looks... Yeah, happy to work at Radio Shack for his whole life. Very, very funny. And then we've also got Biden at the pizza competition, which was pretty comedic as well. And this one turned out really, really good. You can see people holding their phones in the background. Almost all of these faces look really, really detailed and really accurate. And Joe Biden definitely looks like Joe Biden. I mean, that's recognizable as him. And of course, he's looking and holding this ginormous pizza. He's judging almost. He really does look like he's judging the pizza at the competition and this one makes it even better he's actually eating the pizza so he is judging it and he is testing it i love how everyone's taking a picture of joe biden in the background eating the pizza so yeah you're gonna expect to see a lot more of these realistic comedy generations of famous people or famous characters come out with v5 because it does seem to be a strong suit of the model in fact it might be the best model we've seen so far at generating famous people and famous cartoon characters and different brands and there's another example of that of the simpsons which is a little bit screwed up as you can see by the caption here that's definitely what i would also caption this but yeah there's a lot of just screwed up character morphing going on in this but it's getting better at generating the characters at a whole and again one of those comedic early dolly 2 style generations here cats kung fu school they all look like they're practicing kung fu and it's a very realistic image. This is the kind of stuff that I wanted to generate with Dolly 2 when Dolly 2 first came out, but Dolly 2 just could not compete at this level and could not generate stuff like this. And V5 seems to be giving us back our old Dolly 2 dreams in some way, shape, or form here. So yeah, overall, I think you can safely say that the community is very impressed with V5 as a whole, and I'm excited to see how they update and continue to make V5 a little bit better. It's a great start, and I hope they, they continue to improve it. I'm really excited to get that default style back so we can just switch it on, and you can do those one-word prompt exploration, essentially, where you just type, like, Earth in, and it generates all these cool, unique, creative generations of the Earth. Let's take a look at some of the testing I did with V5 for myself. I immediately noticed a difference in the amount of detail that v5 produced and you can clearly see it with these images here this was just a colorful photo of a hand ai technology and it's like cyborg thumbnail really really cool stuff there lots of detail i tried to do a cute pixar robot with this one and it turned out pretty decent i would say although not all of these are perfect coherence like they're pretty good and like this one if i just wanted to upscale it all i have to do is click that and it's pretty much upscaled right off the bat look how fast that upscaling is it's gonna make using mid journey a lot faster because upscaling used to take like 60 percent of your time when generating with mid journey v4 i also tried some of these like trippy psychedelic lemon generations and they came out pretty cool as well lots of detail in this one and it's almost perfectly symmetrical which is pretty interesting to see here but yeah lots of these really crazy looking generations and it did a pretty good job still very very stylized this one was a little bit low resolution i think but this one came out 
pretty good. Very, very sharp, fine details with this. This was a little bit unfortunate of a prompt because I said it was going to be floating islands of different shapes and sizes, and we kind of just got images of like clouds looking over the world here and it wasn't really floating islands at all and then when i prompted it for just floating islands i found the floating islands to be a little bit lackluster and not really my favorites generations of all time this one was really surreal and cool though this was like an ultra sharp fashion photo shoot from the interdimensional future essentially and yeah this was a really really cool set of generations this was simply just cat Gives us a lot of really realistic cats for sure. This one's a little bit painted though, as you can see. Of course, my first generation here was a very simple one. Just a cute lemon character relaxing on the beach. And these came out all right, although I will say they're a little bit lackluster in some kind of a way. They're a little bit like... Some, some weirdness going on, and I think this is the lack of detail in the prompt. The prompt was very, very simple, literally just cute lemon character relaxing on the beach, V5. So I think if I added a little bit more to this prompt, it would have came out better. But V5 pretty much is the most capable AI text-to-image generator we have seen thus far in the history of AI, which is very, very exciting. It still can't spell entirely perfect, which puts it behind other models like Deep Floyd's IF, which can spell a lot better than Midjourney V5, but this model is much, much more realistic and can generate images that look completely real, lots more variety, and in general, it's more resolution and detail packed into Midjourney, and it's very, very exciting. It only gets better from here. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you generate anything really, really cool with Midjourney V5, be sure to share it with my Discord server. That's going to be linked down in the description below, and I hope this video was useful and enjoyable for you guys. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.